let's talk naming, and we're talking about species naming. In other words, how the shamrock chameleon got its name. Chameleons, actually all life, is given a name that's a Latin name, and we have this whole hierarchy of names and uh, ends with a genus and species. That's what we're normally uh, concerned about and exposed to. But it starts all the way up with kingdom, whether you're an animal or a plant, and goes down to genus and species. So this, uh, this naming is done in Latin names, and a Latin was chosen, this is a story that I was told, that uh, because it's a dead language, and so it can be a language that nobody can claim as their own, and so it's universal, can be used across the world. Uh, Kaluma Parsonii is Kaluma Parsonii, whether you're in the US, in China, Bolivia, Australia, it doesn't matter. That is its name. Uh, in addition to that, everybody can have common names, and these are just regional names, uh, and, and there's no structure to common names. There's a, a defined structure to scientific names and uh, how you do it. Common names, doesn't matter. And as we know, a number of uh, our chameleons, our animals, have all sorts of common names. They're different depending upon which country you're in, what language you speak. And uh, this is just a way to have an official name and then a a, I guess they call it a common name, but it's a name that means something to the people talking about it. Now, the scientific name is actually kind of fun uh, because you can go into the root Latin and figure out what do these names mean. And these names can be descriptive of the animal. They can be descriptive of where the animal comes from. It could be honoring people, scientists, wives, girlfriends, cartoonists, anybody. And there's so many animals out there that uh, yeah, you got to get creative sometimes finding a name. But if you look into what all those words mean, it can be kind of fun. Because, uh, say, uh, let's go into descriptive names. Kaluma brevicorn. Brevicorn means small horn. And uh, so that is uh, descriptive of the small horn on the, uh, the rostral process uh, that brevicorn has. Now, if we look at that, we would say, hey, wait a minute, why did you pick the short horn when it has these massive flapping occipital lobes. I mean, why not choose that? Eh, don't know. Troceros quadricornis, four horns. That's the four-horned chameleon that we're uh, familiar with. And uh, Troceros cristatus, crested chameleon, because it's got a prominent crest. I like to think that first of all, Pardalis, the panther chameleon, was because of its attitude. And it can be simple as like First for Baltiatus. I believe that means it's talking about the, the bands on the flank. Don't quote me on that one. I, I, I think that's what it means. And that's not just for the species name. The genus name can be descriptive as well. Uh, Ancelastoma duodenale. That is the name for the hookworm. And Ancelastoma, it uh, comes from the Latin roots of uh, Anclio, like uh, Anclosaurus. Uh, I'm probably saying this wrong. And Stoma, meaning mouth. And literally, the, uh, the genus name for at least one of the genuses of hookworm is armored mouth, and that's to uh, describe the plates in the mouth that are used to hang on to the internal lining. Yeah, kind of <laughs> disgusting, but there you go. And then there's Nicator americanensis. Ooh, that's a little bit descriptive and talks about where you can find it. Although, actually, you can find that all over <laughs> the world. Nicator americanensis, it means American killer, American death. And that is another hookworm that caused all sorts of uh, problems. And we know that uh, hookworm is Ancelostoma. Well, what do you think Ancelostoma caninus is? That is the dog hookworm. Caninus is also used for uh, emerald tree boa, Corallus caninus. And that the emerald tree boa was named because of the long fangs that it has. At least that's what it was in the mind of the scientist that named it. Now there's also geographical descriptions. Drosor capensis is a sundew named from being from the Cape, the South African Cape. If I told you that I had a Trioceros cameroonensis, where do you think that came from? Cameroon. Nepenthes madagascariensis, that's the tropical pitcher plant. That's from, you guessed it, Madagascar. And we even have Trioceros montium, which is from the mountains. Now, I'm not sure how it got its name because Triosaurus montium is actually kind of lower elevation, but hey, there you go. And chameleons are named for cities that they're next to, uh, Triosaurus derimensis. 
So it's all up to the scientists naming it, how they're going to describe it. And of course, there's always honoring other people, scientists, keepers, wives, girlfriends. And even there's a louse named after the cartoonist Gary Larson. And so if you run into a louse that only lives on owls, you know that that louse is honoring the creator of the Far Side comic strip. In the chameleon world, we have Nekasai, and then there's actually names that are strategic. I know one species of Madagascar, Kaluma tarzan, was named that to help with conservation efforts. If uh, people related to the chameleon, they are more likely to care about it. And it'll be easier to use it to help with conservation efforts. And I heard specifically from a taxonomist, that's exactly why it was called Kaluma tarzan. And now we get to common name. Common name is what's familiar to us. It's what's easy for us. It's what we can use in everyday speaking. This common name can be uh, anywhere from something that's derived from the scientific name to something that's totally picked out of the air. Take the Parsons chameleon. The common name Parsons chameleon you use because it's a Kaluma parsonii. Okay, well that's good. This is uh, was named after uh, Parsons. I don't know who that was, but it's somebody, and this is his chameleon. Now I'm sure people all over the world call it something different, but even we start taking liberties. Instead of using its full name, Kaluma parsonii parsonii, we call it Parsons chameleon, or just Parsoni. And if I said I have a Parsoni, you would most likely say, oh, is it yellow lip, orange eye, or yellow giant? Something like that. Usually, people wouldn't assume that I have the smaller subspecies, Christopher. And why is that? They're both Parsons chameleons. Well, because in our community, we use Christopher to identify the smaller subspecies. So I can say I have a Parsons chameleon, and you assume I have the nominate, the Parsonii Parsonii. But if I say I have a Christopher, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you go back and you think, oh, why is that? That that is a source of confusion. Well, it's no, it's because we understand, and that is the importance of a common name, we understand. And whether we use the scientific name or common name often comes down to how easy the name is to say. I mean, if I'm breeding first for minor, I'm going to tell you I have minor. I'm not going to use the common name lesser chameleon. I mean, every now and then I've tried to, but it just doesn't come off the tongue. But the thing is, I can do that because anybody who's in the chameleon community uh, deep enough to know what a first for minor is, they're not using the word lesser it doesn't have exposure to the general community that is intimidated by Latin. And it's the same with Deramensis, Triaceros Deramensis. You want to use the common name, the Usambara giant three-horned chameleon? Nobody says that. We all say Deramensis. It's easy. It flows off the tongue. But we're not saying Triaceros Deramensis every time. We've shortened it. We've given it a nickname. And there are others where the scientific name is used just as much as the common name, Panther chameleon pardalis. Carpa chameleon lateralis. Yes, when you're first starting out, you use panther or carpet, but very soon you start using panther and pardalis interchangeably, just like carpet and lateralis. The thing is, those are easy to say. If I had a species, uh, say, uh, Fiatsmantoi, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, I can guarantee you as soon as that came into the pet trade, we would have a different name for it. We would come up with a common name, and that's okay. Common names are meant to be developed. Sometimes they're actually necessary. Like in the case of Triaceros jacksonii jacksonii, the Jackson's species actually has three subspecies, Xanthalophus, jacksonii, Marimontanus. The thing is, jacksonii jacksonii is just where they stuffed everything they hadn't identified yet. And so that subspecies is so widespread, we know that there are I don't know how many, seven different subspecies or even species levels stuffed into that, just waiting for a scientist to unpack it. And this becomes an issue because the Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleon is Jacksonii Jacksonii. But the thing is, when we look for a Machacos Hills, we want the one that has the yellow swash across the, the, the flank. If you give me a Jacksonii Jacksonii from Nairobi, I'm going to get this brown little thing and I'm not going to be happy at all. And so this is actually a case where the common name is more descriptive than the scientific name. This little chameleon was a complete mess because uh, originally they 
They, somebody, somebody in Europe tried to call it Trioceros jacksonii willigensis, after Willigen, who was some, some guy who uh, first brought him over under whatever circumstances he did that. And, but that, it was meant to sound scientific, but it wasn't. It wasn't an officially recognized name. So the scientific community roundly rejected that, and it wasn't even a good common name because it sounded like it was trying to be scientific. I remember when that first came out, I actually used that name, and there was a scientist in our group that got so pissed off at me that to this day, that was over 20 years ago, he still won't talk to me, so pissed off. And it was, uh, and I just said, well, we need something to call this thing to describe it because it's not the same as all the other Jacksonii, Jacksonii. Uh, and so eventually things worked out. I mean, importers gave it common names. Have you ever heard of Rainbow Jacksons? Have you ever heard of the True Jacksons? Well, these are common names that importers gave that Jacksons. Finally, we came up with the name Machacos Hills Jacksons Chameleon. It was descriptive of where it came from. And so, and that's become in wide usage uh, ever since. Now you ask, where did that come from? That actually Machacos, calling it a Machacos Hills, it came from a podcast episode that I had with Jan Stapala. And I said, okay, we need a name. Let's call it the Machacos Jackson's Chameleon. And he said, okay, yeah, that's all it takes for a common name. And then everybody started using it. That's all it takes. Now, to be fair, it was supposed to be Machacos Jackson's Chameleon because it's, it's found in the hills by the city Machacos in Kenya. But even after I said Machacos Jackson's Chameleon, I couldn't stop saying Machacos Hills Jackson's Chameleon. And everybody else was saying Machacos Hills Jackson's Chameleon. So even though we tried to call it Machacos Jackson's Chameleon, didn't work. It's Machacos Hills Jackson's Chameleon because that's what everybody used and everybody liked it. And that's what a common name is for. Now, common names can be confusing because there's no control over them and anybody can come up with a common name. And now, you know, you can come up with a common name, but if nobody uses it, you know, so, so what? But something like the crested chameleon coming out of Cameroon, you would assume that that would be Trioceros cristatus, the one with the big sail fin. Uh, imagine my surprise when I ended up with a Montium, Trioceros Montium, that was called the crested chameleon. Okay, I mean, Montium does have a crest, but there's another species, another chameleon that deserves that name more. But you know, it's a common name. Anybody can say anything. And often our common names come from importers. I mean, really, is that really the people we want naming our chameleons? Uh, but they, they have to call it something to sell it. Hey, I've got friends. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Now, let's get to the most important one. Kaluma O'Shaughnessyi, the shamrock chameleon. This chameleon was named after Arthur O'Shaughnessy, who was a poet of Irish descent living in the UK. He had an interest in herpetology, and he was actually part of a department of herpetology at a zoo for the last five years of his life. Kaluma O'Shaughnessyi was one of a handful of uh, reptiles that were named after his death for the work that he had done. Now, where did Shamrock come from? Don't you think it should be O'Shaughnessy's chameleon if we were to come up with a common name? And that is true. The thing is, nobody said O'Shaughnessy's chameleon. And people don't even like to say O'Shaughnessy. I. Most people can't spell it. And if you go anywhere on the internet, it's spelled five different ways. It's an unwieldy name. Yes, it's its official name that will never change, but it's not used in conversation and it's not relatable to most people. Even the experienced people, the diehard people that love the Latin names, do they call them O'Shaughnessy? Eh, not really. They call them O's. They just shortened it to O's. Well, that's a nickname. That is a common name. That's not their official name. And when I started working with them seriously, I knew I wanted this to be a larger project than just me with a couple of pairs. I wanted this to be a model for how we could do small batch breeding. And so Kaluma O'Shaughnessyi, number one, was my passion. I absolutely love this chameleon and I feel so happy and lucky to be able to work with it. But also along with that is a mission to explore small batch breeding and how that, uh, that concept a small batch breeding can help our community 
and it, it make it easier for people to get into breeding, make people who are breeding continue to be happier in what they are doing. I think it's a concept that could change our community for the better and take us in a better place. And so this is more than just, oh, okay, I, I think I'm going to call my Oshona CI Shamrock. I'm going to come up with a different name for it. My intention was to come up with a name that was honoring the chameleon and was more accessible by the general public and was easy to use. I picked Shamrock because number one, it respects the heritage of O'Shaughnessy and Shamrock describes the incredible greens on the chameleon. So I think Shamrock is respectful of the chameleon itself as well as who it was named after. And in the end, there is no right, wrong, there's no committee that uh, you have to go and get things signed off on. If people use it, then it's valid. Now, that being said, uh, for those of you who are working with me on small batch breeding and within the chameleon community, we use Shamrock. We like Shamrock. It's a great name. But don't be surprised if you go outside of the Chameleon Academy and people either haven't heard of it or number two, refuse to use it because there's politics all over the place and you never want somebody else to win whatever winning means in this stupid social media world. We just need something to use when we're communicating amongst ourselves. And if you go outside the Chameleon Academy community and you're dealing with people who refuse to use the name Shamrock, well, don't worry about it. Call it Oshonasii, Kaluma Oshonasii. That's the official name. And if you take the philosophy of when in Rome, do as the Romans do, well, call them O's or whatever common name they've come up with that they believe is more appropriate. The whole point is we're not creating an empire here. Let's not live or die over this name, Shamrock Chameleon. We're trying to do a social experiment. Can small batch breeding work? That's what's important here. I don't care about the terminology. I wanted a name that was fun to work with, easy to work with, and that people would actually use. And so that was my thinking and everybody will have their own opinion. And that's, I mean, that's just the way of it. But for me, when I'm dealing with my small batch breeding program, I'm, I'm going to call them shamrocks. And as long as we all know what we're talking about, well, that's what language is for. Now, if you have any questions about naming of uh, O'Shaughnessy I or any of the others, then put the question in the comments below or come to one of my weekly live sessions and ask there and get your uh, answer in real time. And, you know, for most of these things, there isn't such thing as an answer. Uh, so much of what I do is just discussions. And so join in the discussion. And for me, I am going to continue to enjoy my morning at the park. I'll see you soon. Music